In this video, we highlight the new 3D materials in Fusion 6 by combining them to create a complex shader that emulates the multi-layered paint you find on modern automobiles. We'll start by creating a shape we can use to evaluate the material as we create it. Uh, this will be a sphere, but we'll trim it back to a curve so that uh, we can tell the difference between it and the materials we'll be viewing in the left display view. And uh, we've also increased the subdivisions to 100, so there's enough geometry there to see nice smooth specular highlights. Now we're going to start with a 2K texture we load off of disk. This is a um, noise texture we're going to color red. And this noise represents those tiny shards of reflective glass that you find inside of a uh, base coat on the car. That's what gives it its sort of shiny reflectiveness. And so uh, we need to combine those flakes of glass with the base coat of the car, so that's of course going to be colored red. We'll use a fast noise to represent that, so it's not just a flat shade, but something with a little texture and variation. And so we adjust the scale and the color of that until it's the kind of red we're looking for. Now when we combine that with the flakes, we want to make sure we can see both of them, and right now we're just merging it directly over top, so we'll go back to that merge, set it to overlay mode, drop it to about 70% gain, and uh, in fact let's put another one on top of that and we'll just blend that at 30 percent to give us a little bit of density there. Now this is just a flat texture so we're going to use a uh, fall off to give us different control over the texture for the parts that reflect back at the camera versus the parts that reflect away. And when we view that on the left, you can see that it's been mapped to a simple piece of reference geometry that we can use to evaluate the material directly. Now, of course, this being a car, it's going to have a reflection even in the base coat, so we add a reflect tool in the material, and uh, we've brought in a HDRI image for our environmental map, put it in through a spherical map, tool and now we connect that to the reflex reflection map input and we can adjust the glancing strength and the face on strength now because of those little pieces of glass though the reflection strength is not actually going to be uniform so we're going to deal with that in a second but first we'll blur the texture back a little bit because it's really much too sharp for a base coat and so you can see the effect of our blur tool on the sphere map and on the material or object as we apply it now, as I mentioned, the glass is going to adjust the intensity of that. So uh, we've taken the original flake texture map. We've inverted it using a color curves tool just by inverting the curve and then bringing uh, part of it up so that no matter what, we're not always reflecting back to nothing. And we connect that to the reflection intensity texture map. We also need a bump map so that uh, the reflection will vary a little bit in uh, its angle of incidence. So we're going to create that by using a channel boolean and a color space and another channel boolean to convert the luminance into x and y vectors. Uh, and that is x and y vectors, which we store in the red and green channel, we're uh, going to connect directly to a create bump map tool. The create bump map tool can create either height maps or bump maps. In this case, we're going to use uh, the bump map, which means there's no controls because all the information is in the xy vectors. Later on, we'll see a height map. That gets connected into the reflect tool as a bump map. Now, the next step is to uh, model the um, metal surface that this paint is going to be applied to, which will have its own set of highlights and reflections. We're going to use the Ward tool for that, which provides us with uh, non-uniform specular highlights, so they can be uh, longer or wider. That's useful when simulating metals with irregular surfaces. So we're going to reuse the bum map we created and the inverted flakes. We'll use that texture to modify the spread of the specular highlights. We're also going to use a color corrected version of the base coat as a texture for the color of the specular highlights. Finally, we're going to add a fall off material so that the uh, specular intensity can drop off according to the angle of incidence. This is going to give us a very shiny metallic texture. Now we adjust the specular intensity and the spread, or we will in a moment anyway. There we go. Now we can adjust the specular intensity and the spread here. So if we tweak the intensity, make that nice and subtle, because it's just one element of multiple layers of paint. But more importantly, we'll tweak the spread on the U and the V until we get this um, narrow uh, but circular uh, specular highlight. Excellent. 
Now finally, we need to create the clear coat that goes on top of this and the surface reflections. So we're going to add a blend material, which is similar to the uh, ward that we've already used. But we'll set the diffuse color to black since the clear coat is transparent. We'll also set the, spe set the specular color to a desaturated version of the base coat. And uh, we'll make that specular large and very soft. Uh, we'll use the flake textures uh, that we had there. We'll threshold them a little bit. And those will get connected uh, to a bump map tool, which in this case we're just going to use as a height map. So uh, we back the height scale back a little bit, connect it to the bump map input, and you can see how that's affecting our specular highlight. And we'll just back that off even further. Now we're going to take that blend and we're going to connect it to a Fong tool. And the Fong is going to apply another layer of specular highlight. This one's going to be a very small and very sharp. And we'll tint it blue a little bit for the complementary color for uh, red. Now this needs a reflection, uh, but uh, this reflection should be sharper than the one we applied to the base coat. So uh, we'll add a new sphere map and this time we'll uh, take the original photograph. Uh, the HDRI image. We apply that to the reflection color, tweak the face on strength to give us a nice strong reflection. Now we have to combine this with the uh, original material, so uh, with the base coat material. So we use a channel boolean material and we just set the operations to A plus B for the red, green, and blue channels and uh, that's it. We've combined uh, all of our elements, the base coat, the uh, multiple reflections, a bunch of bump maps to create a really nice looking uh, car paint.